Today on This Week in Video Games, Adrian's talking all about Donkey Kong Country Returns. We're talking about Sega's new IP shooter. Plus, we've got the top five best video game gifts. Welcome to This Week in Video Games. I'm Andrea Renee here with my co-host Jessica Villarreal. Hello everyone. It's very good to see you. Thank you for joining us. And we've also got Adrian Acevedo-Smith over there manning the chat room. Hello everybody. Nice to see you again. <laughs> And I want to give a huge thank you to Storm On Demand. They are the reason that you can watch all of our amazing content here at This Weekend Network. Please do check out some of our other shows on thisweekend.com, and you can see it because of Storm On Demand. For all of your cloud computing needs, visit storeondemand.com. All right, so it's been a very interesting week. We had, of course, last week off in celebration of Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Did you have a nice holiday? I did, yes. It was very nice. Lots of food. Yeah, Adrian, did you eat lots of turkey? Uh, yeah, I had I had turkey here at Mahalo, so you got, you good. didn't took a, cook turkey at home? Uh, well, no, because my family's in Mexico City, so. Oh, uh, you didn't get to spend it with your family? I didn't either. Yeah. If it makes you feel better, <laughs> we kind of did like a like an orphans uh, Thanksgiving right. you know, with a bunch of people who couldn't afford to go home because right. we're saving up to go home uh, for this Christmas. month. For Christmas, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. how it goes usually. Uh huh. <laughs> well, great. So we are gonna go ahead and get right into the showdown. And uh, this week, all three of us are playing together. It's in an XPLA game called Geometry Wars Evolved 2. Now, uh, hopefully most of you out there have played the original Geometry Wars. It's a dual stick shooter. Um, it's only 800 Microsoft points, and it's uh, super fun. Uh-oh. <laughs> It's really cool, though. I really love the graphics in this game. Uh, you guys can go ahead and press A to join in. Mm -hmm. There we go. And what we're going to play is Deadline. I am the yellow. I am blue. No, I'm, I am pink. Hi. I'm yellow. Okay. okay. I am just going to go through and get all the green things after you guys kill them. How about that? Oh, that's <laughs> cheating. Oh, no, what are we supposed to get? What are I the, little, the little green gems, you want to pick them up after you shoot the, the oh, shapes. Oh, okay. Oh my god, there's so much going on on the screen, I can't even That's tell the what's one going thing on. that I really kind of love about the game is that it is. It's like ah. a visual feast for your eyes. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I'm glad I don't have epilepsy. And I just died again. Yes, don't run into any of the shapes. <gasps> I'm gonna shoot them, not run into them. But what, what, what does a power up look like? Oh, is that a power up? Um, if they're, they're, they're usually in the shape of a five pointed star. Okay. And those little barbells that pop up, you can bounce your um, your ammo off of it to kind of do bank shots. And you can also fly right through them to get a multiplier. Oh, I died. I've died several times. Where am I? Oh, oh, there I am. Yeah, you blink in the middle a little bit before they... Ooh, power up, power up. bomb. I'm going use a Bernard. Oh, I lost myself. I don't know where I am. I know. Oh, I died again. Uh, I think I died. How do you oh no, watch out, the black hole! Can we crash into each other? Uh, I don't think we can. I think if you hit another player, you just kind of like bounce off it all the time. Oh wow. And what are we playing to? Is there just a time limit? It's a limit? time limit. We have one minute left. Whoever can get the most points is the winner. Whoa! Oh my god, there's so much going on. Oh, I died again. I do too. This is crazy. Oh! I wonder that? what it would be like playing this game if you were colorblind. <laughs> I think it would probably be easier. <laughs> I think the colors are extremely distracting. Yeah, they really are. Oh, 
Yeah, some of the people that play this, um, some of the best players get into the millions of uh, in score. Like, we're talking like 10, 15 million. I have no idea how they do it. So... Oh my god, I yes. lost! Oh my gosh, Adrian, look at how close we were together. I can't. Oh, 885 like... to 825. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Sweet, so that is Geometry Wars. It's a really fun game. It's highly addicting. Let me tell you, once you start it, it's going to be hard to put it down. And they have six different <laughs> gameplay modes. It's, um, it's pretty cool, so you should definitely check it out. It's on the XBLA. It's 800 Microsoft points. There you go. That was our showdown for this week. I oh, they're victorious! Now. Not gonna lie, I probably had a little bit more practice than you guys. <laughs> That's all right. We're gonna go ahead and get into some headlines right now. We got some interesting news for you in the video game world. Up first, there is word on the street that Christopher Nolan, the infamous director of movies such as The Dark Knight, is going to make a video game based off of his blockbuster hit, Inception which I think is a really cool idea for a game. Now, I, you guys know that there's a lot of, like, obviously movies that have turned into video games and vice mm -hmm. versa. What do you think about this as a potential game? Uh, I'd be interested. I mean, I haven't seen any footage on it just yet, and um, it was just a rumor for a really long time, so I didn't know that this was actually uh, happening. But I really don't... I wouldn't even know what to expect. I mean, would it just be the storytelling that really drives the game, or what exactly would go into the game like um, for example in the movie like when they fall back into the into the river and the guys like floating around is it gonna be like the zero space in in, in dead space or are you gonna have to like float and find your way around the game I wonder I really wonder what they're gonna do with that. that yeah, it's really gonna be, we have some footage from the trailer for those of you out there who maybe have not seen Inception yet. We have some some it's images that you can check out. Like um, I think it's gonna be. I think that this is ripe for a video game. The concept is so unique. It's it's definitely built to have multiple layers and side missions and mini games and the characters. I really really hope that they get some. Uh, of the original cast members to come back as voice actors. Oh, that would be fantastic. Be what do you think, Adrian? Uh, I think it'd be pretty crazy. I really don't know what kind of genre it's going to be. If it was a third-person shooter, I guess it would be pretty fun. I and mean, it seems like it would fit that. You know, at any time a train could come running in and kill you, so that would be nice. Yeah, and Christopher Nolan doesn't make crap. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I would have pretty high hopes for something like this when it releases. So I'm really excited to see what Absolutely, and, and the fact that he is behind it, mm -hmm. it is, is really the most exciting part because if it was some third party being like, we want to buy the rights to make the game, mm -hmm. you could probably guess that it's not going to be great, but now right. that he has come out and been like, I want to make a video game about this, I think, it, I agree. I think yeah. it's going to be awesome. We will so. see, we shall see. Exactly. <laughs> so up next, Xbox Live has announced that they are going to start a rewards program. And I'd say it's about time <laughs> of all the money I've spent on the Xbox Live mm -hmm. network, customizing my avatar, buying games, doing DLC. I think it's fantastic that they're finally going to do this. Um, it launched this week. It's free to join. If you join as, and you're already a current Xbox Live Gold member, you get uh, an extra 200 Microsoft points just for signing up. If you renew your membership, you get another uh, set amount of Microsoft points. If you activate your Netflix, you get 100 Microsoft points. If you buy certain content, you get bonus points. What's really kind of interesting about it is I don't think the amount of bonus points they're giving you is quite enough to get substantial content, but it's enough to do cool things like customize your avatar, mm. like you know, buy clothing or shirts or you know, custom gear right. from special games or teams or things like that. So, so. is this something like, like uh, you know, like when you go to your bank, when you use your credit card, you get like two cents back? Is that basically what they're doing with this? Every time you Essentially, use... yeah. Oh, okay, For every okay. a certain amount of uh, Microsoft points you buy, you get a certain amount in reward. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense, you know, to give a little bit something back to the players who do buy a lot of stuff, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that is good if you want to buy, like, a puppy for your avatar or something like that. <laughs> so, I mean, I'd rather take it than not have it at all. So, that's that's good. I think it's just, like, a little token of, you know, Microsoft's mm -hmm. appreciation for their customer base. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this isn't, like, earth-shattering what they're giving away. Right. But it's it's enough to for us, for I think it's enough of a carrot 
for people that maybe mm -hmm. have been stalling on upgrading their silver membership to a gold membership to be like, oh, hey, well, if I get a gold membership, I get so many points for, mm -hmm. you know, upgrading. And there's a lot of really amazing indie games on the Xbox Live platform, and thankfully they did bring the indie games back to the forefront. I know when they did the redesign of the interface, the indie games were kind of buried, but now they're back right. up to where they used to be. And we used to do a lot of indie game reviews, something that we are going to continue to do once we uh, come back from our break in the new year. Um, and uh, it's definitely, that's, a, I think, a good reason in and of itself to become part of this program, especially if you're already an Xbox Live Gold member. Mm, definitely. Well, I might as well just go and sign up, get my uh, 200 extra points. Can't yeah. hurt. Can't hurt anything. Exactly. It, it only does you good. So why not? Absolutely. Why not sign up? <laughs> so sign up. Xbox Live Rewards. And our last headline today, Sega releases a trailer for new third-person shooter IP binary domain. And before I get into the game, I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit of the trailer for you right here. Just try not to hit me. As you guys can see, this is clearly a very stereotypical uh, group of soldiers that are running <laughs> through a city. Um, the game is set um, in Tokyo in the year 2080, that's 2080, so about uh, 70 years in the future from now. The whole premise is that you control this peacekeeping squad, which are these soldiers right here, as they try to protect the city from this invasion of robots. And what the twist on this game that is hopefully going to make it better than and what the trailer here is showing right now is that the, the, sub, the subtext is you don't know if the robots are becoming part human or if the humans are going to turn into robots, which I think is kind of an interesting concept. I mean, we've obviously seen games similar to this before, so it's not like they're doing anything groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. But the, so that's where the story is really going to come in because, I mean, the dialogue, <laughs> the dialogue in this trailer leaves a lot to be desired, uh. I think we all can admit. Oh. So, if you guys want to um, check out the full trailer, it is available online. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on Sega's site. Um, Sega has, um, I, you know, it's sad to say that they're they're kind of fading as a as a game maker. They had Vanquish this year, which was a really fantastic game. Vanquish was great, though. Which so. didn't get as much great press as I really hoped it was going to get. It kind of like was like, oh, it's here, and then. Everyone forgot about it because there was Medal of Honor, there, there was, so was Black Ops, mm -hmm. you know, there was Halo, there was all these other really big, you know, flagship games. So, right, yeah. But uh, this is expected to come out hopefully late 2011. There's not a set release date yet. Sega hasn't confirmed when it will come out, but it's supposed to be a third-person energetic sci-fi shooter. So. Oh. Is that all they've announced? Did they announce anything like multiplayer? Because I noticed like the other two characters in there, that'd be nice if you can play as the girl and one person plays the guy or something like that. No, no no other details have been announced. Mm -hmm. I really do hope that they have a multiplayer. I really think that if you're creating a new IP these days, if you're not including a multiplayer, you're just shooting yourself on the foot. Yeah, I mean, that's it's really true. where gamers, are. I think, are connecting is in multiplayers. Obviously, look at the success of Call of Duty. People didn't buy Black Ops because of the campaign mode. I mean, mm -hmm. let's be honest. Right. They bought it because they wanted to get online player. and yeah. shoot up some people with their friends. Yeah, or even local co-op. I feel like not enough games have local co-op. So if that, I don't know, that might be a game that I would consider even getting just because it has local co-op. Because I think it's nice to be able to sit there with your friend or your roommate and actually play a game together and talk to each other side by side as a as opposed to being like, ah, say that again. I can't hear you. Hang on. Let me let me see if my headset's plugged in correctly or something like that. Like um, with Borderlands, I think the side by side co op, the split screen was amazing, and um, that game can be kind of lonely if you're playing by yourself. So I mean, you never know. This could be the same way, and it would just be nice to have a partner with you. 
can go either or. So, and I love how I feel like more and more male characters are starting to look like that. Like Lieutenant Commander Shepard and um, Lieutenant Forge from Halo Wars. They all kind of look like that scruffy beard and shaved head and they're like big soldiers. But they all look like that now. Yeah, exactly. So, so give us give us something else. You can Sega. say that for almost all male video game characters, though. I mean, they all kind of started to look like Nathan Drake. You know, like you got the little bit of beard, a nice straight nose, very short crew cut hair. Like you could name a bunch of video game characters that look just like that. That's I think it, I, I think it's a safe bet. I think they stayed in like well in the '80s. This was pretty much awesome. So let's just stick with what was cool in the '80s. Mm. I think that's why I like um, Leon S. Kennedy's character so much from Resident Evil, because he's actually blonde and totally clean cut. So, yeah. I love you, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> and he so. is definitely badass. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want everyone out there who's watching us live, either on our website or via Justin, to know that we also have a Ustream chat room that is piped in right here in the studio. We can see all of your comments. If you guys are ever interested in joining our Ustream chat room, we love all of our awesome people that show up in the chat room every week. It's ustream.tv slash this week in. So please feel free to join us in our chat. And speaking of chat, it's time for our Yo Adrian segment. I did it. <laughs> you did it. I did it. This is our segment every week where Adrian takes you through a difficult section of a game and shows you that, breaks it down and shows you how to beat it. So what do you got for us this week, Adrian? Uh, this week I got Donkey Kong Country Returns. <laughs> So this game is actually really, really tough. It's incredibly challenging, not your like uh, everyday platformer. So uh, what I brought in was the minecart level, the last minecart level, which is really, really challenging. And before I go into the video, just a little, some tips, always use the, the Wiimote si um, sideways. Never try to use the Wiimote and the nunchuck because it just gets really imprecise. So just to use the Wiimote sideways. And during this level, always make sure to keep your thumb pressed on one, and then you kind of alternate pressing two when you have to jump. The reason why you have to always be pressing one is that without pressing one, you won't be able to grab immediately. And in this minecart, you're jumping out in and out of the cart. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and play the video. And it's Adrian game. from Hollow Video Games. And this on the is an educational second? video on how to pass Donkey Kong Country Returns. For more videos in this series, Mahalo, visit so mahalo.com slash DKRWT. Okay, uh, right. they're just loading it up to the, to the start point. And um, so before we get started, it's, it's really simple just to get to the minecart uh, part. You just hop in the barrel and you hop in and then you shoot out and pretty soon you're going to be on the rail segment. Now this is one of the features that is in Donkey Kong Country Returns that was in the original Donkey Kong Country. Pretty like much what made it of, famous, the minecart levels. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I love doing the minecart levels. There's some other features that are uh, coming back from the original Donkey Kong Country, right? Like yes. what are some, some of the other ones that are they gonna be in? Uh, well, you got the minecart levels, you got the barrel blasting levels where you have to time uh, where you, sh you shoot out Donkey Kong. And you also have Rambi, he makes a return. Sadly, that's pretty much the only mascot. Squawks kind of makes a return. He can help you locate secret icons, but you don't, he doesn't do the same things as he did in the previous games. But, oh, yeah. well, that's kind of sad. Oh, I hear that we have our clip ready to go. Woo! All right, so you grab a couple walls, and pretty soon you skip that guy, and you're going to go right into the minecart. So first thing, you're gonna have to hop a lot, and you're gonna grab immediately. Mm. Now, after you grab, you're gonna go down, and the important thing here is that when you're jumping, make sure to jump and press too, so you can jump as high as you can. Remember to duck there? Because you wanna jump as high as you can so in order to make the jump. The one that's coming up, you're gonna have to jump in midair. So wait until you hit the old, then you jump, as you saw, you saw there. So you keep going. Um, make sure here to get the end, don't worry, you'll land right on the cards. And now here's a tricky part because you're going suddenly on land, right? So you shoot forward, just a couple more platforms. And here we are going onto the land portion very soon, right there. Never jump on those bad guys because if you start hopping on them, the platforms will sink and you'll fall into the lava. And coming right up, this is the trickiest part. This is the biggest gotcha. As soon as you land in this second one, wait for a second right now. Wait for a second, boom, fireball comes out, then you can jump out. Don't jump out too soon because a fireball will kill you. Jump into the barrel. Now here, count five platforms. So one, two, three, four, five. Jump at the fifth, you'll land on the G. And keep going. Always jump at the very end of the tracks and you have completed the level and getting all uh, Kong letters. 
Oh my god. That gosh. is amazing. Yeah. Wow. That looks so now my friends have told me I this game is sitting at home on my counter right now waiting for me to play it mm -hmm. um, because I've been playing Mass Effect 2 but I'm really mm. excited to play Donkey Kong Country Re Returns and they've said it's really hard and oh, yeah. that looks ridiculously That's pretty hard. Much, it's pretty much the toughest stage in the game I would say. Yeah that took about an hour to beat. I've wow. actually been playing the game. Um, I've been doing a promotion for Nintendo at one of the malls out here in Los Angeles and that's one of the titles that, titles that we're demoing and our entire team, I would say of 20 people, not one person can get through one level without dying at all. And in fact, there are certain levels that I can't, I, that I've played the first 10 seconds of over and over and over and over and over <laughs> and over and over and you just can't beat it. And you have to be so precise. It's so, timing is so important in that game. And you only get like two hearts, two lives and it's so challenging and, and I would say extremely difficult. I don't, I don't know if any kids might be able to play that game because it's just that arduous. Do you way. think they made it too difficult? Do you think they went overboard and uh, it took a lot of the fun out of the gameplay? I think in certain levels they definitely did go overboard in the terms of the difficulty. Like the two levels that go after that, the platform levels, they just went ahead and be like, all right, well, what's the most difficult thing you can do in platforming? Disappearing platforms. So in all the rest of the platforming, they literally, every single uh, platform you land on falls. Everything is always falling. You always have to be moving which is, makes it a little bit challenging because you can't run around and collect different things, which means that you have to pass a level multiple times if you want to collect everything or if you want to uh, you know, get 100%. Now, did you need Diddy Kong to do that level the way you did it? Because I noticed you were able to hover a little yes. bit in certain yeah, areas. Yeah, Diddy Kong, Diddy Kong is absolutely essential in Donkey Kong Returns. If you don't have Diddy Kong, you can pretty much just kill yourself and then go and get Diddy Kong <laughs> at another level and come back because his hover jump is absolutely critical to making mm -hmm. those uh, tiny jumps into the platforms. And as you saw in the minecart level, in order to jump off and immediately hover back into the minecart, you need Diddy Kong. You can't do it without him. You would have to jump on the bad guy, which makes it way, way harder. That's so, so. great. And was that you? Was that your footage? Like you were able to do yes, all of that? that was That's my impressive. Footage. I'm going to say that right now. That's Thank pretty you. impressive. <laughs> so. Curse in the chat room wants to know if you think it's harder than Mega Man 9. Harder than Mega Man 9. I would say so. Yes. I mean, Curtis, I think you got to give it give it a chance, and you're Call gonna see how this game is now. really gonna kick your ass. Cause uh, yeah, I initially thought, oh come on, Nintendo platformers. Psh, I've been playing new Super Mario Bros. I can take this. No, I couldn't. It was <laughs> it, it's tough little cookie. All yeah. right. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to trying it out. Okay, everyone, it's time to move on to our final segment of the show: the top five best video game <laughs> gifts. Yes, I love this time of year, it's so much fun. <laughs> Not only is there a lot of um, get-togethers and parties and family time, there's amazing deals on electronics and video yes. games, which are so expensive. It takes so much of my budget every other time of the year, but now is a great time to stock up. Of course, we just had Black Friday, a lot of gaming consoles saw huge sales. The Wii, I think, had like 2.5 million mm. units, or no, not, no, that's the Kinect. Um, but we sold we sold quite a few units just on Black Friday. Oh, I think it was nine hundred thousand actually just on Black Friday. Was that is that the number you got? I could totally be wrong. I know it's something big, okay. I, but I know that they've <laughs> sold two point five million connects up up to this date, and that PS three also did a lot of uh, big bundle deals on Black Friday um, through all the major retailers like Best Buy, Sam's mm -hmm. Club, Costco. You know, Walmart, Target, those kind of guys. So um, you have our number five on the list. Yes, my number five gift um, to give to your friends or family members, I think, um, are t-shirts. Cute, gaming, geeky t-shirts. They're cheap, they're easy to order online, and everyone loves them. All the, the, the gaming uh, people love them when they see them. This here is... Um, splitreason.com, but you can also go to woot.com and tfury.com, and all of them have their own little homages to um, different games and different gaming characters. And I, every time I see someone wearing a shirt that has some sort of gaming character on, on it, I'm like, where did you get that? That shirt is amazing. I compliment every single one of them. So, and they're usually only around like $19.99 to $24.99. Sometimes you can get them for 10 bucks. So. Easy, simple Christmas gifts. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And a Hot Topic actually has, I know it's a chain store, mm -hmm. but they actually have quite a good selection of some video game shirts as well. Yeah. Because I know sometimes it's difficult, especially for women, to find vi cool video That's game shirts true. in women's sizes. So. This is very true. Very nice. All right, at number four on our list is Astro Gaming A40 headphones. We have a photo of them for you. Now, these are really great. They're perfect if you guys do a lot of online multiplayer because um, it allows you to clearly hear all the people that you're gaming with, to talk to them directly. If you live with roommates or if you live with your parents still and you want it in your gaming late at night, because I know I game in the middle of the night all the time, as most gamers do, and you're worried about the sound, because some of these games have such an incredible sound, you don't want to keep the volume lower off. You want to be able to hear it. These are one of a couple of other headsets that um, are really fantastic and they're made specifically for gaming. They're Astro A40s. You can find them on a number of, of e-tailers. So uh, 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 number four on our list of uh, top five gaming gifts. Adrian has got number three. I do have number three, just finishing off. You chat with someone? Yes. <laughs> All right. So for number three, we got the Gunner Optics glasses. These have actually become really popular around the office. Uh, one of our guys, Wes, just refuses to take them off. He just walks <laughs> around with them. Uh, they're really good because they reduce eye strain by a lot. So, and they're actually um, statistically proven to help you out with first-person shooters. So you, you can see faster. At least that's what they claim. And Wes has been using them all the time. And he sa says that they've been working really good. Yeah, I actually got to try on a pair of these when I was at E3 in uh, the Mad Cats booth. They had some some gunners made specifically for Black Ops, and uh, they do. It's really, uh, I mean, they really work well when you've been playing for hours. And when you're a gamer, that's normally how you play. You play for hours at a time. <laughs> so this is a really great little gift for the gamer in your life. Uh, Gunner Optics glasses. Up next in the number two spot, we've got specialty controllers. And there's two controllers that we want to highlight. The first one I want to talk about is the new Tron controller. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. This guy looks super cool. Mm -hmm. Lights up. It's got the blue Tron detailing. Um, it sells for around 40 bucks, depending on what site you get it on. Mm -hmm. And it's just really kind of neat. It's a, it's a great little gift for someone who needs an extra controller, and it, it looks snazzy, and it lights up. It's true. If I were to get a, another controller for my Xbox 360, I think I would get that one just because it's that cute, or it's, it's beautiful actually. It lights up and it just looks, it just looks sexy. I'm not gonna lie, it's beautiful. <laughs> I like it a lot, so. Absolutely, and we also have the special Call of Duty Black Ops Precision Controller. Now I actually have this controller at my house, and, and I have to tell you, I was very impressed with this controller. Some third party controllers, um, uh, the button stick, the, anal mm. uh, the um, analog sticks don't move as smoothly. This one actually has two hidden buttons on the back of it that you can remap the buttons on the front to. So for example, if you're doing a, a game like Call of Duty where you're um, aiming with one and moving with another and you want to, for example, jump, but you don't want to take your finger off of your sight stick, then you can remap the jump to the button on the back so you can continue to look and move and jump at the same time. So it's, wow. it's really kind wow. of a, a handy trick if you have someone in your, uh, in your life that you know is a huge first person shooter player, that, this controller is absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a really great gift. It is also around 40, 50 bucks depending on which site you go to. And that is number two on our list, which leads us to number one, consoles. Now we couldn't decide mm -hmm. on one single console because there's so many amazing bundles out there. Mm -hmm. And um, the first one we're going to talk about right here is the Wii. This is of course the 25th anniversary edition. It's the red Wii with the red controller and it comes bundled with the Super Mario Brothers for the Wii and Wii Sports. Mm -hmm. And this is a really fantastic deal. That's really why um, and Nintendo pushed so many units on Black Friday. Mm -hmm. Of course, we got here the PlayStation bundle. That's the PS3. It comes with the Move PlayStation Eye camera, the Move controller, uh, an original PlayStation wireless controller, and then um, the PlayStation 3 Sports Champions, which is their uh, kind of flagship sports program for the Wii, or excuse me, for the PS3 and the PlayStation Move. And that game, I have to say, we have it at my house. It's really fun. They've got really bocce great. ball, volleyball. Um, archery. It, Adrian and I did the archery a while back. It's really uh, true to life movements. And it's a really great game to play with a bunch of friends. Um, and it's a workout. You're, you're, you're up, you're moving around. And then our last uh, bundle that we're featuring is, of course, the Xbox 360 Slim and the Kinect, which everyone is talking about. 
I have to tell you, this is the one bundle that we're featuring that's really, really difficult to find. Mm -hmm. They are almost sold out almost everywhere I've looked. They have limited supplies. This, of course, comes with the Xbox 360 Slim. Now, you can choose to get the 4 gigabyte or the 250 gigabyte model. It's a $100 price difference, and then it includes the Kinect, and then a controller, and of course, Kinect Adventures. So mm -hmm. some bundles have Dan Central in them, some have Connectimals, okay. uh, depending on which retail you're at, depends on which game is included. Some retailers even let you choose which game you want. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I would like the Dance Central bundle. Um, Jessica at thisweekend.com. I do take presents. I'm just saying. Yes, <laughs> so we would all like presents here at thisweekend.com if there's somebody out there that wants to give them to us. <laughs> so that yeah. is our top five best video game gifts for the people in your life that are gamers. Check out all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll have that posted on our blog, on our site afterwards if you want to recap any of it. And that brings us to the end of the show. We want to thank everyone for watching this week in video games. If you have any show suggestions or top five ideas, if you want Jess and I to take each other on a specific game, email us at videogames at thisweekend.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at TWI Video Games. You can follow me, Andrea Renee, at Andrea Renee. And you can also follow Jess on Twitter as well. Yes, twitter.com slash Jess V. That's J-E-S-V. Or you can email me at jessica at thisweekend.com. And we finally convinced Adrian to start becoming an active tweeter. Yes, yes. I just um, recently activated my Twitter account. So you can Twitter me at GodzillaRex. Or you can also find my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash GodzillaRex. Or uh, be sure to visit our Mahalo Video Games channel, youtube.com slash Mahalo Video Games. And especially right now, because we're actually taking on a lot of holiday specials. So, yeah, absolutely. And we're all, you guys are also doing the Mahalo Video Games Challenge tomorrow yes, night. Yes, and the Mahalo Video Games Challenge is going to be tomorrow night. Call of Duty Black Ops is going to be great. And I will be there in the chat room, their Ustream um, chat, uh, taking questions. So if you guys want to join us again tomorrow night, um, you can go over to, like he said, uh, youtube.com slash Mahalo Video Games to get all of the information. I want to thank Storm On Demand once again for uh, supporting us here at thisweekend.com. We will be back next week with our Ask a Pro segment and Galaxy for Games. We have a female gamer coming on the show. No way. Yeah. No so, way. Yeah, That's crazy. <laughs> a professional female gamer. So it'll be lots of fun. Thank you so much for tuning in. But for right now, it's game over.